Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I hope that you're having a great holiday season. I also hope that you've had a really great year. I know that this year has been tricky for most of us. 2020 was a little bit crazy, but nonetheless, I hope that we can all find something that we're really grateful for. And honestly, you guys in YouTube is something I am so, so grateful for myself. So I thought it'd be really fun for me to share what my top 10 favorite DIY projects have been for 2020. And also I will share with you what my absolute favorite video has been for this year. So without further ado, let's get into it. So coming in at number 10 for my top favorite DIY projects of the year is my thrifted arch table that I flipped into being something super cute. So I honestly felt so lucky when I found this table at the thrift store. It was only $12. I almost actually walked right on by it, but when I saw it, I was like, wait, I totally need to have it, super affordable. And all it needed to be transformed into something of this era was a little bit of cleaning and some chalk paint. And just like that, it was absolutely perfect. It's the perfect color, it's the perfect shape. Arches are super trendy right now. So trendy that if you go onto the CBT website, you will see several tables just like this one for hundreds of dollars and this one only costs twenty dollars including the paint to flip it definitely one that i love to bits i love it so much but have i found a home for it in my home yet no but am i willing to sell it or get rid of it no because i will find a place for it to live <laughs> at number nine we have a dollar store DIY and this is one of my early dollar store DIY videos and yet still one of my absolute favorites when I was walking down the aisle I saw this loofah that was wrapped in this natural fiber netting and I thought I could totally use that netting on a vase and turn it into something pretty and that's exactly what I did so from a loofah and a glass vase both from the dollar store and for just a couple dollars we made this super nice textured piece and I love it so much because I just feel like it fits right in with really any space in my home. Right now it's in my bathroom, but before I had it on my living room table, I've had it in my bedroom. I've kind of had it moving all around. I put some eucalyptus in it. You could also put fresh flowers in it. So I just really like how it looks. And honestly, it was probably my easiest DIY I have ever done. Literally just take that outside of the loofah off, put it on a vase, add some hot glue, and boom, just like that, you have a brand new vase that could have been purchased at a proper store like Home Goods or Home Sense or something like that. So yeah, definitely a win in my books. Okay, so for number eight, we also have another dollar store DIY. I've done a lot of them and I love so many of them, but this one is specifically a hexagon clock. All it took to make this was two wooden craft trays and a clock mechanism from another dollar store clock. Put them all together, add some chalk paint, pop in a battery, and just like that, you have such a pretty clock. This clock is currently in my bedroom. I love it so much. It's so minimal, but sophisticated looking. The chalk paint really complements it very well. It was obviously super affordable to make because everything was from the dollar store, but at the same time, it looks so much more high end. So I definitely love that one so much. Every time I look at it, it brings me so much happiness and so much joy. And that is obviously why it is one of my favorite DIYs of 2020. So my next favorite DIY project that I've taken on this year are the fringe pillows that are on my bed. I made three of them all in one night. They were super, super easy. All you need is the most basic sewing machine. Now, sewing was actually my first love, okay? And these pillows are honestly something I could have taken on the first time I picked up my sewing machine. So this is two of them that I made. Um, there is a third one, but just to see like that fringed edge is super, super cute and textured. It's just kind of like a nice added touch to it on this one as well. I just think it looks so nice. And I've seen these pillows actually sold at proper home decor stores for a lot more than what it cost me to make them. Plus the fact that I was able to make it out of the fabric of my choice to perfectly match my color scheme. So it's kind of a win in a couple different aspects for me. One, that it matches perfectly. Two, that it's made out of a linen fabric. So there's some nice added just texture to the fabric overall. It's also soft and very comfortable to use. But then third is the actual added fringe, which I think in my opinion really makes the pillow pop. It makes it feel extra luxurious because you wouldn't see that on an inexpensive pillow. So all in all, they're a super easy design, super professional looking, and I honestly enjoy them every single day when I make my bed fully and I see them on display and I just love how they look so much. Now coming in at number six is my DIY blanket ladder. Now this is a two-toned ladder that was inspired by one that I saw on the Anthropology website that initially cost $100. So obviously I wasn't gonna buy it at that price range, 
but I was able to DIY it in a really, really easy but professional way. Like it looks so nice, it's so sturdy, the colors match bang on, it was exactly what I was going for, and that's why I love it so much. Now to do this project, all you need are two long pieces of wood and a couple dowels, and then the specialty item that really pulls the whole thing together is the four center drill bit that I use. It was my first time using that type of drill bit, and I was really proud of myself for figuring out how to use it. In the end, it ended up being super, super easy, so I couldn't recommend it enough. So I just wanted to take a minute here to really call something out, and it's that as I'm looking at my top favorite DIYs of the year, it's become so clear to me that I've done so much creative learning, so many new skills, using power tools, using new products, and that's just been so fun to learn how to do. And on the topic of creative learning specifically, I did wanna tell you a little bit more about today's sponsor that is Skillshare. Now I've worked with them before. I love working with them so much because I love their product and their platform and everything that they offer. They basically offer thousands of really unique classes across so many different topics. So on the creative end, there's so many things that I really, really love from classes on home decor to film, which has been really helpful to me, drawing, illustration, journaling even. I was actually just watching a really good class on interior design called Interior Decorate Like a Boss by Rose Sprinkle and it was so good at helping me figure out how to actually lay things out in my space. Because of my decorating videos, I think a lot of people think that I naturally am able to decorate properly. Um, no, <laughs> that's not something that naturally comes to me. I actually struggle with it a lot and I have to tinker around so much and I've learned how to mock things up better through some of the Skillshare classes. If you wanna try out Skillshare and learn something creative, they've been so generous to offer 1,000 of my subscribers a free trial of their premium membership and then after the trial, it costs less than $10 per month with an annual subscription. And as I said the last time that I worked with them as well, it would mean so much to me if you actually do go ahead and click on the link to to check out Skillshare and to sign up because I really want this partnership to be a success. I love working with them so much. They just offer so much value to my life and hopefully to yours too. Okay, now let's get back to the countdown of my top DIYs of 2020. Okay, so for number five, we actually have my fabric covered dresser that I did in my bedroom makeover. I basically had the mom dresser that was six years old. It was white, it was super plain looking. I was tired of it. So my options really were to get rid of it or to upcycle it into something that I would love. And I had the idea of actually covering it with a textured fabric. I ended up using a textured muslin fabric and all it took was some glue, attach that fabric on, add some drawer poles that were super unique looking from Amazon and then a custom piece of glass that I got cut at a hardware store and just like that it really transformed the whole dresser from being typical Ikea to being so West Elm looking I love it so much it just elevated the whole look of it now this is a controversial piece because a lot of people said that they loved it so much a lot of people said that they were super skeptical but then once it was finished they loved it and then a lot of people said that I was crazy for doing it in the first place it would get so dirty it would get destroyed and I essentially just ruined my dresser so it's funny because I get this array of comments now I will just say for the people who are skeptical about the longevity of the dresser I did do this DIY over six months ago and the dresser is holding up so far perfectly I really did go into this project thinking you know this could either work and turn out so pretty and so nice and I will love it or I have just destroyed my dresser so coming in at number four is a thrift flipped lampshade that was totally initially intended to be used on either a table lamp or a floor lamp and I converted it into none other than a pendant lamp. And honestly, I love it so much. It has a really nice shape to it. What we actually upgraded it with was Fiber Rush Cording, which is a product I had never used before this project. And I just love the lighting effect that it has. I love the shape and I also love the natural material that it's made of. So all in all, I think it fits in really well with my space and with my style and I've totally seen other lampshades just like this one for a couple dollars at other thrift stores so chances are if you actually really want one of these in your home and you want to do this thrift flip you can probably find one at your local thrift store as well you just got to keep an eye out Okay, so now it's getting a little bit tricky to be able to pick between these different projects because I love them all so much. But I have decided for my third favorite DIY project, it is my DIY tapestry that is gigantic, made out of 
dollar store string and some pieces of wood and some fabric dye. This was not done using a typical dip dye method, but was done instead using a much more professional method for this type of tapestry. And this was to be able to basically get a really defined abstract look where you could be much more precise with where you want the colors to go. And I absolutely love how this turned out. Now, part of the reason I love it so much is just because of how big it is. Like I made this in direct proportion to what should go above a couch. So that means that it's a really, really big piece. It's definitely a big statement in my home. It makes any space pop when you look at it. And I love the fact that it can be customized with whatever colors would suit your home. Also, I just wanna say that tapestries of this nature, of this size that you could buy online, cost about $1,000, if not more. So just the fact that we can make this really stunning piece of art that's typically quite expensive for such a reasonable price really contributes to why this is one of my absolute favorite DIYs of the year. Okay, so coming in at number two is my renter-friendly DIY arch accent wall. And this was something so special to me. It's so unique, the fact that it can be renter-friendly. And I just love everything about it. So for mine, I picked this nice maple glaze orangey color, which fits in perfectly in my space but you can pick whatever color obviously would suit your space. This project only costs $50 to do, but with that $50, you can have something that is non-committal, perfect if you're a renter, can be removed with no damage. And now obviously with an arch wall, we know that it's super trendy. We've seen them on Instagram, but to me, what really made this special is the fact that it's renter friendly. And that's really with my heart, empathizing with Delia of the past, because I know that in the past, I felt so nervous to do anything with my rental. I didn't paint a single wall. I didn't hang a single thing on anything other than command strips. So I really wanted to come up with a rental friendly method for all the people out there that feel Feel the same as I did at that time. So yeah, that one really has a special place in my heart. I love it so much. I love the way that it turns out. I love the accent factor of it. I like that you can just paint over it with another color of paint if you want to still keep it renter friendly but change up the color. And the best part obviously is just that when you get tired of it or if you're moving out, you can just remove that accent wall by peeling it off the wall, giving your wall a little wipe with some warm water and you'll have your wall good as new. You'll never have to feel like just because you're a renter, you can't have that accent wall of your dreams. Okay, and are you ready for my number one DIY of 2020? It is my DIY anthropology inspired tassel light, okay? It is this light right here. A light that looks stunning when it's off and it looks stunning when it's on. Arguably it looks even more pretty when it's on. I love it so much. The inspiration for this light was one from Anthropology that cost $160, AKA I was never going to buy it, but I did find a way to make it myself out of really affordable items. This project took a long time to make all the tassels and it also took me some time to figure out how I can construct this in a way that looked nice enough to be hung below eye level so that you can actually look down at the top of the tassel. I also I also spent a lot of time figuring out how to actually hang it, just like that, from that hook um, and to have the right type of cord that will go with it and look nice as well. So a lot of thought and just energy and time went into that. And that's really not uncommon for most of my DIY projects, but with this one specifically, I just get so much happiness every single time I look at it. I loved it so much that I made a second one and I put one on either side of my bed. So that time investment obviously says that I love it so much because honestly, I don't ever want to repeat any of the DIYs I've ever done before because I find it so draining after the fact, but not the case with this one because I just love it so much. It adds so much to my room. It's really one of the focal points when you look into my bedroom as well. And I just love the impact that it has both when it's on and when it's off. And I will just say that when this light is in frame in my videos, I get people asking every single time where I bought the light from. And I think that just speaks to how professional and nice it looks. And honestly, I'm so flattered when people ask that question. So yeah, by far, this is my favorite DIY project of 2020. So now you know my top favorite projects, but are you ready to find out what my number one top favorite video is of 2020? Before I tell you, I'd like you to comment down below which of the 10 projects I just shared is your favorite. Do you agree with me about the tassel light? Do you have a different favorite? I always am so interested to see what your different opinions are and I find it so fun to read those comments. So definitely go ahead and leave your comment right now, which one of those 10 projects was your favorite. And now we can move on to my number one video. Now, I'm going to have to say that my 
bathroom makeover video is by far my favorite video of 2020. And I think it's just because every time I walk into my bathroom, I am so happy with how it turned out that it makes me feel so much joy inside. And that is why the bathroom makeover video is my favorite. If you'll notice, none of the projects that I did in that video individually made it into my top 10 DIY projects. Unlike my bedroom decorating video where I did a lot of individual projects that I was really, really proud of, with the bathroom specifically, it was the whole project, how all of it came together and that I honestly just get so much joy inside every single time that I see it. So that's definitely my favorite video. Did you watch that video? I feel like a lot of people who have subscribed to me have seen that video. So ah, if you haven't, I mean, you might be missing out, but you know, up to you. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching till now. And thank you so much for liking me enough to watch my videos in general and to subscribe and all that stuff. Please check me out on Instagram if you haven't already. I'm at DIY Delia with an underscore at the end. I understand a lot of you guys don't have Instagram, but if you do, I am asking pretty, pretty please for you to check me out over there. I'm really trying to grow and it would mean a lot to me. I hope you guys have a wonderful new year and a great 2021 year ahead. I'm super excited to see what this year has in store and hopefully it will have in store a bunch of fantastic DIY projects that I can share with you guys. Thank you so much for watching once again. I really appreciate it. You're making my dreams come true. So honestly, I love you so much and I will see you guys next time. Bye.